Hi everyone. Welcome to today's Daily Lent Reflection. Today is Tuesday and it is February 27th and it's the second Tuesday in, um, or Tuesday in the second week of Lent. And the two scripture readings are taken from Isaiah 1 verse 10 and 16 to 20. And the second reading from Matthew 23 verses 1 to 12. And our quote comes from Matthew 23 verse 12. Quote, whoever exalts himself shall be humbled, but whoever humbles himself shall be exalted, end quote. Jesus, uh, so today, um, obviously, our reflection is on humility. Jesus implies that humility is a positive virtue. Most people seem to think it is a negative virtue at best, and in truth, a handicap. While many persons seem to think of humility as a repressive virtue, Jesus indicates that it is, in fact, a liberating one. It is not easy, of course, to summarize what the gospel means by humility. The great Saint Teresa describes it in one word, truth. That seems to be an excellent definition, provided we understand it. To do that, we have to break it into two parts. Humility is truth to be sure, but truth in itself um, is self-knowledge and also truth in action. Truth in self-knowledge. This is the core of humility. It means that we have a real awareness of our human condition as creatures of God. It means that we do not lose sight of this most basic truth about ourselves, that God is our creator and our loving Father. Quote, For the God who made the world and all that is in it, the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in sanctuaries made by human hands, nor does he receive man's service as if he were in need of it. Rather, it is he who gives to all life and breath and everything else. In him we live and move and have our being." End quote. And that quote is taken from Acts 17, verses 24 to 28. The most basic, basic truth about ourselves is that every gift and talent we have comes to us from God. Truth in self-knowledge demands only that we remember this. In other words, humility does not require that we deny the gifts and talents we have, only that we acknowledge where they came from. The theme song of the humble person is, quote, Who confers any distinction on you? Name something you have that you have not received. If, then, you have received it, why are you boasting as if it were you, your own? End quote. And that comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. Truth in action. This means that our basic conviction about ourselves and our talents and abilities, as outlined above, colors our manner, our speech, our association with others. Our entire bearing communicates that whatever talents we have are gifts of God. That is the truth, and we are happy to live in accord with it. We do not, therefore, put on airs, belittle others, lord it over them. We do not have to. We know the truth, and the truth makes us free. Freedom is indeed one of the fruits of humility. It frees us from the ty tyranny of false images, from the petty conflicts of jealousy and envy, from the empty struggle to be what we are not. Humility lets us be ourselves. With it, there is no more crazy fear of being passed over or neglected, no more phony desire to be praised or singled out. If there were more humility, would there not be less fear and tension in our lives? Fewer ulcers, fewer tranquilizers, and fewer psychiatrists. Thomas Merton has written wisely, quote, For a humble man is not afraid of failure. In fact, he is not afraid of anything, even of himself since perfect humility implies confidence in the power of God, before whom no other power has any meaning, and for whom there is no such thing as an obstacle." End quote. Peace is also a fruit, of, a fruit of humility. The humble person is spared a good deal of the turmoil and anxiety that robs so many people of peace. Peace has been aptly described as the tranquility of order, in other words, we know who we are and why we are here and what God has done for us. 
Such a conviction brings deep peace. Jesus spoke of the humble when he spoke of the poor in spirit and the lowly, those who recognize their need for God, their dependence on him. To them he promised happiness now and in the future. See Matthew chapter 5 verse 3. No wonder he invited his disciples to, quote, learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart. Your souls will find rest, end quote. And that quote comes from Matthew 11, verse 29. And in closing, we have our prayer for today, and it's an ancient prayer, and it is like this, quote, Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make our hearts like unto thine, end quote. And our practice for today is this. Today I will acknowledge with gratitude this gift, fill in the blank, name it, it's going to be different for all of us, that the Lord has given to me. Today I will acknowledge with gratitude this gift that the Lord has given to me. So um, that's our reflection on humility. And you might want to ask, how does one come become more humble? Well, you can pray on it. And um, if any of you have this little prayer book, it's the Pieta prayer book, and, um, or Pieta is the way it's pronounced. And uh, there is a litany of humility in here. And um, it's, uh, the, pray, the prayer is a page, but it doesn't take long to recite it. And it actually is a very beautiful prayer. And if you recite this every day, it will help, uh, help you become more humble. And um, also, what you can do is if you go to Google and you just type, you just say, Litany of Humility. According to Wikipedia, the following Litany of Humility is a Catholic prayer that the penitent be granted the virtue of humility. So there you have it. It is even right there on Google. And, um, it comes in a very nice format that you can print off. So that's it for today. I hope you can put the prayer into practice. And God bless. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.